Villavante family is regarded as one of the finest NASCAR racing families of all time. While Terry and Bobby went on to win championships and make the Hall of Fame, Justin Labonte's career sank into obscurity. How did this Lebanon miss out on the Cup Series? Let's find out if this is a NASCAR bust, Justin Labonte. Keep on watching and subscribe to our channel, Racing Rush. Let's begin. Growing up in a renowned racing family, Justin Labonte was born to race cars. He started racing at the age of 15, winning back-to-back -back titles in Charlotte Motor Speedway Summer Shootout Series. He then went on to Hooters Pro Cup Series. In 1998, he finished third in the overall standings, achieving 13 top 10s and winning the award for consistency, all while racing for his father. By the start of 1999, Justin was just 18 years old, and although a couple more seasons in the Pro Series would have undoubtedly benefited, he and his father decided it was time to step up to the NASCAR Bush Series. It's just part-time, but with his father being a car owner and him joining the series with his renowned last name, he was expected to show some potential straight away. And by the year 2000, he got his own video game. Instead, one of the worst two-year spells in Bush Series history occurred during his part-time stay. You may argue he can't stop himself as he falls. As he got that door open, the automobile swerved against that outer wall and it was difficult to rip the car at them. Here's a look at the speed shot from start to end. Wow, check out 5. When he tapped him in the back, Trickle and Justin Labonte's 44 pulled him up off the ground. There was Justin with two left hands getting ready to go three laps down, and I guess he got up on Judson a bit sooner than he intended to. By the way, Justin Labonte is driving the 44 terrible vehicles, and he's getting a lot of seat time. That is not Terry or Bobby Labonte in that automobile. Let's check with Ralph on the second level for further information. One vehicle had become extremely loose towards the top of the circuit, and when it recovered control, it crushed everything together. But we're being cautious since Barrett was putting down some liquid. Justin Labonte goes high in turn 1. Carson was on track at lap 6 for a variety of issues. In turn 1, Justin Labonte spun off and soared high. Do you know what troubles Justin Labonte has shortened? We've been warned about his Chevrolet. Justin was in the 36th position. Too unfortunate for Justin, he was three laps down. What happened to Eli is that they saw the automobile. There the person checks up, but the guy behind him doesn't. So he has to slam on the brakes and they start losing control. So you know, it's virtually nonsensical in one. One respect and when the first man checks in, they run so close together here that you can see them slipping in. Now they came from the rear. There was nothing on the racetrack to cause that we see him coming back down out of the wall and he goes into Justin Labonte. Justin already had some damage on the rear of his 44 automobile. I didn't see where he acquired it, but he previously had damage to the rear of the automobile on a part-time basis. Justin Labonte has zero top 10 finishes in 22 starts, and he was nowhere near racing in any of them. Over the course of two years, the average finish was 30th. He isn't even 20 years old at the moment, so there's still plenty of time to grow. It's still not the greatest look to start outside the top 10 as a heritage driver, and he would have made 22 starts in 2000 alone if not for those 9 DNQs. He made the smart choice to race late models over the following several reasons, but all while doing so, some crazy in Daytona Beach persuaded a 17-year-old that he was Terry's kid in order to entice him into doing extremely strange things. However, from 2001 to 2003, he made one Bush Series start before returning to a part-time basis in 2004. Strangely, he is racing for his father's team once again. Considering dad races for Hendrick Motorsports and his kid drives a Dodge, those anticipating improvement received the opposite by the time the summer rolled around. He hadn't even finished in the top 10, making his one NASCAR victory all the more impressive coming from Chicagoland weekend with 30 starts without a top 10. This one was thought to be no different since it began in the 34th place. However, at the conclusion of the race, he started to reel in the top 10. But with a slew of late warnings and the leaders having issues all day, it would be wise to avoid pitting too late. Mike Wallace was attempting to conserve gas when Justin placed just enough pressure on him, resulting in one of the biggest shocks in NASCAR history with the white flag flying. Right, and you simply don't want to lead. 70 laps was a little much to ask. Wallace runs out of gasoline and just has the half lap to go off on turn 4 for his maiden NASCAR Bush Series victory. Welcome to Justin Lamonte, who wins the Twister 300 at Chicagoland after starting with no top 10s. Everyone except Terry, depending on the performance. 
Prior to this victory, I would rank this as one of the top 5 NASCAR upsets. The victory was fleeting as he failed to finish in the top 10 for the remainder of the season. However, due to his sponsorship with the Coast Guard, he was able to continue his career for at least one more year. He was able to strike an agreement with Gene Haas. After a promising start to the season, he suddenly spiraled out of control. We saw the points a while ago when Justin Labonte, the 44, came into this. Truck racing vehicles for sure, the 44 of Abani, and one of those cars had to have major damage as well. That's a rough start. And there's Justin Levani wheeling his vehicle back into the garage. And you can see the 33 is probably heading in to turn 3 right now. And this group seems to have just begun checking up on Justin Labonte, who is in the reel of Tyler Walker. Now behind him, now everyone is slamming on the brakes because he's coming around the track on the 7th car, which is Mark Green. He's here with Jerry Robertson, and I suppose the automobile hadn't been very comfortable for Justin all day. He's been battling a little bit. Brent Sherman sneaked through there on the outside. She says, oh, here we go, on the back now, 44 automobile, Justin Labonte spins caution out. Oh, what a break. That's not over, Martin Truex Jr., despite the fact that they are still wrecking foreign. When you're behind the crash and surrounded by smoke, you can't see anything. Stacy Compton in the 59 vehicles just slipping between past the two spinning cars in the 41. They got through there because he'd been on the pit road with his hood up, burning off some gasoline. We needed to do something drastic about this automobile since it's severely damaged. What about a front clip? There we see the seven vehicles being tagged by Jason Leffer's 32 car, but he nearly saves it. Mm, yeah, no. He had it saved. If he had been struck again, he would have preserved it. And Justin Labonte was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And as I already said, it does not work. That's all it takes to knock a vehicle sideways and ruin it on this racetrack. You practically have to if you look to the left rear quarter panel. It's spin out in the opposite direction. I really assume he lost it, trying to escape the collision in front of them. His lone full-time season resulted in two top 10s and seven DNFs. A 23 and one points finish for 17th. He would never race full-time in NASCAR again after this. In 2006, he made three truck series races and one Bush series appearance for Hendrick Motorsports, finishing 20th. If you can't run well in that equipment at the end of the day, it simply wasn't meant to be. Some may be questioned why I branded him as a NASCAR flop, while others see him as a historic driver comparable to Kerry Earnhardt. The difference is that Kerry didn't start racing until he was in his late 20s. Meanwhile, Justin started at the age of 15. He had a great background and was moving through the ranks by the age of 18. But in retrospect, it was much too soon. Today, he is married and raising a family. And from what I can understand, he races locally. Anytime he is a danger to win on your local tracks, however, three top 10 finishes and 76 starts in NASCAR make him a NASCAR flop once again. That'll do it for another video. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you very much for watching the matter.